There have been a few videos that I've watched this winter that presented how cities can encourage winter cycling by building and maintaining proper infrastructure. So this won't be one of those videos. Instead, this video will highlight a little accessibility feature that is often adversely affected in the winter, the curb cut. Curb cuts date back to the 1930s in the UK to help people pushing baby strollers. The US started using curb cuts in the 1940s to help disabled veterans and they were mandated by legislation in the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. In countries with snowy weather in the winter, curb cuts can quickly become a barrier to accessibility unless they're designed and maintained correctly. In winter cities, curb cuts can fill with ice and slush because most are improperly designed. As you can see in these clips, the roads are designed such that water drains to the side, into gutters. But the curb cuts are also designed as slopes towards the gutter beside the road. If there's no drainage at the low point where the road and curb cut meet, that low point will fill with ice and slush. This bike sidewalk keeps the curb cuts mostly clear as it's well sloped towards a drain that is not in the middle of the walking or biking sidewalk. It can often happen that care is not taken while plowing the street and a large windrow can block the curb cut. So what can be done to keep curb cuts clear? Wherever possible, don't use them. Now. I don't mean to make cities unaccessible for people with mobility issues. I think winter conditions are another reason to use raised crosswalks, also called continuous sidewalks. This is about the only raised sidewalk I know of in my city. As you can see, water drains off it quite well since it's raised. However, my city didn't get the design quite right as the sidewalk dips a bit at the curb cut, so some ice and slush has accumulated across the path. Not far away is another example of a design near miss. The entire intersection is raised as a way to slow SUVs, but for some reason, the crosswalks weren't raised along with the intersection, so the curb cuts have filled with water. That's all I really wanted to say about curb cuts. If you live in a winter city and some sidewalks or grades separated bike lanes are being built, try to have raised crosswalks built. When done properly, they won't fill with ice and slush, so they'll remain accessible for people with mobility issues. They also won't be as treacherous for people on bikes. I do want to mention one more thing that relates to winter mobility maintenance. I was tipped off that some of the oldest protected bike lanes in my city weren't being cleared of snow properly. These lanes have appeared in my channel before. In my opinion, they're a little substandard, since they're built to my city's bare minimum width standard and the chicanes to maintain a few parking stalls make them feel narrower. Well, it appears no one in the city was thinking about snow clearing when they designed those chicanes. As you can see in this video, wider protected bike lanes are all well cleared. This narrow lane has been decently cleared on the straight sections, though in some sections, the snow from the road has been plowed over the curb and into the bike lane. However, nearly all the chicanes are poorly cleared of snow. If you live in a winter city, it is important to consider the effect of snow clearing on curb cuts and protected bike lane design. I hope this short video has helped highlight some maintenance considerations for active transportation in winter cities. If so, please consider giving it a like. If your city does winter active transportation well or not so well, please let me know about it in the comments. Thanks for watching.